What's happening, party people? Welcome to Blues Lawyer Confessional. I'm Jack with Matt I'm Esquire. Matt Esquire. Okay, you did it. In the news, not guitar related, uh, Silicon Valley Bank has been taken over by the government. Is that right, Matt? It is right. I mean, the government, what they, what they it was placed in what's called receivership, uh, which basically means that the Federal Reserve has uh, stepped in. They're going to be running things for a little bit. Yeah, it's- and why you, you guitar people out there should think should care about this is that one of Silicon Valley Bank's clients, customers, I guess you would call them, is Etsy. And a pro- a company owned by Etsy is Reverb, which is a online shop that I'm scrolling endlessly through most days. And I know you are too, Matt. And yep. uh, it's one thing you know is, is collections and uh, making sure people get paid. <laughs> if I am a Reverb shop or i'm a seller or even a buyer should i be concerned with the current financial situation of reverb etsy and their former bank if it was within 24 hours of the collapse i'd say you're gonna have some sleepless nights but now that we're past that first amount of time i think actually it's time to sleep easy i found out about this actually because number one as you stated I'm always on reverb. It helps pass the day, you know, after I grind through an endless stack of complaints, then I'm like, okay, I've earned a five minute break. Let me just derp on this for a while. And I saw a banner online, which said, just be aware that you're probably going to take, you know, it's probably going to take us a while to get you your money. And that is because their funds were with uh, Silicon Valley Bank. However, in the interim, The government has announced, whether for better or for worse, that depositors, regardless of size, will be fully insured. According to the government, don't worry, all of Reverb's money is there. And so their money is there, which means your money is there. And their their insurance cover, their covered insurance amount is higher than what I would be personally insured for at my bank, right? Like, there's yeah. no cap on that. It's what their assets were in that holding. Is that yeah. correct? That that's right. I mean, I, I'm probably showing my age here, but you know, when I when I was a, a little kid, my my granddad took me down to the local bank, and we opened a savings passbook account, and mm-hmm. I was explained that yes, your account will be insured up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which when you're a kid and even now, I mean, it, it might as well be a billion dollars. Yeah, all. it's it's, it's mean, an inconceivable amount. And if I, if and just again, not financial advice, but if you have that amount of money in cash, you should not. You shouldn't <laughs> just, have it in one account. In one um, account, that's not a great idea. Yeah, the the way it ordinarily works, as I understand it, is that basically once you have more than two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in an account, go down the street, go to a different bank, and open an account there and then that will be insured and not a different branch a different bank so because it's not a personal cap it's a bank entity cap yeah per yeah. person per depositor yes yeah. so well that's nice yeah but again the way people it may have affected people even more directly is that another one of the clients of silicon valley bank was patriot payroll systems which is a payroll uh, company, kind of like ADP, mm-hmm. and they had all their money with them too. So people actually didn't get uh, their paycheck on Friday when they were supposed to, and it took them mm. a few days and gave mm. a lot of people heartburn. Mm. So you got to wait a minute till you get your your uh, cash out on your bad monkey sales. Yeah. Well, that's heartening. That's good to know. But uh, yeah. yeah, that's why you should keep all your money in guitar gear because you know, as an investment, it's always safe and secure in your house and nothing not only that wrong. but it it'll uh it, it'll only go up in value after after the zombie apocalypse we're going to be yeah. using guitars as money well at least for fire <laughs> <You know? laughs> but uh pivoting to protecting your investments as a homeowner i have a homeowner's insurance policy when i was a renter i had an insurance policy on my gear and one thing that uh believe i thought was a an amusing deal was that a couple of years ago, I kind of just like offhand just told them what I thought I had. And it's like, hey, cover me for $10,000 of music gear. And they're like, yeah, it's fine. They put that down. It's like music instruments, $10,000. And 
But then I actually went detailed and I printed out my reverb collection with what they were saying the prices were. Because to me, like rebuying a 20 year old SG is inconceivable. That's not the same thing. And so I sent them that report and then they just itemized my whole my whole list of everything I have. And that's what I'm covered for now, which I find is, I think, nicer. Do you think that the approach from a legal standpoint, and maybe you don't know, which is fine, and I can delete this whole section, but is it smarter to have everything itemized like that or just make a blanket, state, blanket statement and say $25,000 musical instruments and associated studio gear? Is that is that better I, from an insurance standpoint on a total loss or does it not matter? And it's like my whole world's screwed and they're going to give me a, a check of whatever. And this is going to hamstring me. Number one, you've got, uh, you know, this is putting my old insurance attorney hat on from 20 years ago. The first thing you need to know is what the limits of your policy are. Um, you know, so you can, you know, if you're insured for, you know, Eight hundred thousand dollars for for your house, you know, or whatever. And meanwhile, you've got, you know, a million dollars of equipment or something like that. If it's be once it's beyond the policy, <laughs> yeah, the blanket who really coverage. cares. Um, that stated, it's always better to have a paper trail to have something that you can prove. One of the things that the age of reverb has done, thanks to the change in the IRS rules, which still aren't in effect, is that you're going to want to keep a paper trail anyways to show what your basis in your instruments are. And so I actually have found one of the greatest tools that Reverb has is that collection. Yeah, I love uh, the collection. Because that gives you kind of a real-time idea on what you have. You can put in anything. And if yeah. you're bored, you can even put in just for your own personal record keeping the serial number things like that the only problem is obviously just like putting all of your money in silicon valley bank putting all of your data in this one place if the one place goes down your data goes down but in the meantime it is a great way to have it all you can export for your it, it yeah it exports as an excel file so it, yeah it, i pull that pull that off but it, it's 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 really cool. Like I I enjoy it's like oh how many how many boss T twos can one person have? And that's a really great way to live your life. I mean I uncovered stuff that I didn't even think about. It also is a great reminder of the hidden costs in musicianship. Like okay yeah, yeah you know what's your music gear load like? And you're like oh yeah I got that guitar and that guitar and that guitar. But it's like how many cables do you have? How many mics are just sitting around? What stands? mic stand you know this mic stand here this clip that holds this mic if you itemize each piece the processors over here each little part and piece that connects everything together that adds up you know that kind of stuff or like how many empty pedal board like how many but how many more pedal boards can one person get it's a neat study and then it's like then you think of extra like oh there's a ukulele i'm counting that sure let's count the ukulele let's count the banjo uh what about the kid size guitars extra guitar cases in the closet extra gig bags in the closet um, it's a it's a slippery slope down itemizing all your stuff, but it's really fun. The foam stuff that goes under my speakers. Yeah. It's uh, uh, well, I mean, it's, it's a there, wild there are there are limitations. I mean, it's great for guitars. I guess even drums. Um, I don't, I don't yeah. really look at drum stuff. However, I didn't put my drums on the thing. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, it's not good though for pianos. Really. And yeah, really. It it has for pianos. You really kind of have to go and find out what what a new one would cost. We have a Baldwin Upright Grand. I can't find it on on Reverb. However, another benefit I could see is for when you have upgraded your guitar and you've mm -hmm. upgraded all the value out of it because you might make it sound better. You will make it worth less. I well, it depends on what kind of guitar it is. I I don't think. And, and this might be a whole other topic, but when you upgrade, when you upgrade your guitar and make it sound better to you, I don't think you, you, it's like a, getting a good car stereo. You're never getting that value back out and like, oh, I put a thousand dollar stereo in my car. So it's, it's worth more. It's not like, oh, but I got this awesome Epiphone right here. Let me throw in some sweet pickups. Cool. I'll give you $800 for it. Doesn't matter. Those pickups cost $600. It's still worth $800. And that's why you see so many 
I pulled these pickups out of this guitar for sale on reverb because you can't get that money back out in the guitar that, that you put it in. But if your know, house burns it, down, yeah. you can say to them, Hey, oh, yeah. look, this had the Seymour look, Duncans in it. They're not going to have, you know, an expert there unless you a, get the, have the bad luck of someone who's, you know, a guitar, a guitar geek also, which actually might not be bad luck. They might sympathize no. with you and say, yeah, don't worry about it. I'll, uh, I'll sweeten it up a little bit. Or they're not going to drag in an expert unless you sue them. It goes to litigation and now they're going to pay for an expert. So Yeah, I don't I don't think you're an insurance adjuster and you come upon a total loss situation and you you see that there's a decimated guitar collection. I think I'd be the the shoulder to cry on and uh you know someone to to commiserate with. The insurance adjuster on the one hand it's not their money. On the other hand, they are judged based on how much money they pay out on claims made, but they're probably not going to nickel and dime on individual yeah. ones. As long as you've got a paper trail, they can say, okay, you know what? This guy's got documentation. Do we really yeah. want to spend $10,000 to save $5,000? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. But again, knock on, knock on wood, trying to have be safe out there. Keep your guitar safe. And don't burn your house um, down. Don't burn your house down. Less fiddling, more, more playing. playing.